Hey what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Darkfold tutorial. In today's video we're going to be creating an abstract stylized animation as you can see in the example here. For this abstract animation we're essentially going to be using a particle system, some volumetrics and a whole bunch of compositing. And finally, we'll be using the default cube, which may be the first time I've used it in a tutorial from the beginning. I don't know, maybe you guys can let me know if you've seen me use a default cube before. First thing we can do is go ahead and align the camera. So I'm going to go to the front view by pressing number pad one. And now we can align the camera to this view. So I'm going to hold control, alt and number pad zero. Then we can select the camera, press G and then just move it up on the Z axis. Now the default cube is going to be used with our particle system. So we can just grab this and move it out of the way for now. And since we have this selected, let's go ahead and give this a material. Find the material properties, which is this one here. And by default, this cube already has a material. So what we can do is go to surface, change this from a principal shader to an emission shader. And we go ahead and change the color and the strength. So we will come back and increase this a little bit later on. What we can do now is change this from solid view to rendered view. So I'm going to go up here and click this button. So as I mentioned, we're going to be using a particle system. So we're going to need an emitter. So shift A. I'm going to go to mesh and add in a plane. Again, you can add in any other type of object that you want to emit your particles from. That's entirely up to you. Then I'm going to press G and then just move this up out of the way. And if you want, you can scale it up as well. So I'm going to press S. Let's also grab this light and bring this over. So I'm going to press G. And now we can add in a floor plane. So shift A, mesh, plane. Scale this way up. Then I'm going to move this on the Y axis. So I'm going to press G, press Y, move this back. Now let's go back to our emitter. So I'm going to select this plane here and let's go to the particle properties, which is this icon here. Now we can add a particle system by clicking this button. And then if we play through this, we'll see the particle system play through, which they just fall down as you would expect. Now we can go through here and play around with a few things to get the particle system to work the way we want it to. In this example, I want the particles to fall down, but maybe a bit slower than this and also have a bit of uh, motion to it as well. So it's not really a tutorial on the particle system. If you guys want more videos on the particle system, maybe let me know in the comments below. So I'm going to go through here pretty quickly. Uh, we're going to have a meter, then the number of particles, we can reduce this to 200. The frame start is fine. The frame end, it can end at 250. The lifetime, I'm going to increase this, but again, I'll probably end up changing this as we go on. The random, I'm going to increase this a little bit, not too much, just so there's a variation on its lifetime. Uh, so that's it for the emission. Then go down to render, because right now we can see it's rendering halos, which are essentially nothing. If we press F12, we don't actually see anything. So over here, render as, we're going to change this from halo to object. Then down here under object, let's open this up. So we could use this selection tool here, left click this, and just choose the object that you want to instance. So for example, this cube here. Then let's jump back to the first frame and play through this. So we can see we're using these cubes. Again, you can play around with the scale, make them bigger and smaller. So increase the overall scale. Let's also increase the random. So there will be a different sizes. That should be it for the render for now. The next thing I want to do is go to physics. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I don't want these to just to fall down to the ground. I want some random movement of these particles and that can be done with the Brownian. We can see where it does. It increases the amount of random erratic particle movement. So that's great. That's exactly what we need. I'm just going to grab this and increase it a little bit. But for now, I'm just going to jump back to the first frame, play through this and see how it looks. So we can see it's more random. I'm going to increase this maybe a bit more. So it does stop at 20, though, if you want to increase it more, you can just click it and then just manually type a number. Then jump back to the first frame, play through. And we can see it now, they just go all crazy. <laughs> so again, play around with this value until you get something that works for you. So they're falling quite fast. And what we could do, we can go down here to field weights, go to gravity and reduce this down. That would kind of slow things down. But instead of that, what I'm going to do, go back up here to dampen and just increase this. So now let's jump back to the first frame, press play, and we can see they fall a lot slower. So we will need to increase the lifetime. So go back up here, go to emission. Just increase this to something that works. 
Another thing you might notice is casting shadows on the ground because there's a light source right here, which maybe you want to keep, um, but for me I want to get rid of the shadows. So I'm going to select the lamp, go to the lamp settings, see down here under shadow, let's just turn this off and there's no more shadows on the ground. Now I'm going to go back and select our particle emitter, go back to the particle settings. When you're happy with all these settings, I'm just going to close this down. We can go to cache and bake this so we don't lose this information. So go down here to bake, click this and it's now baked. So we won't lose any information, but we also cannot change anything. If you do want to make any adjustments, you will need to go back down to the bake section, delete the bake, then you can make some changes. And then when you're happy, go ahead and bake it. And one thing I forgot to do, let's, oh, let's go back and delete this bake. Uh, go down to rotation. If you want to add some rotation to these cubes, right now we can see they're just falling straight to the ground. If you want to add some random rotation, go ahead and activate this. And then let's randomize this a little bit. I'm also going to enable dynamic. Again, make sure you're happy with all this before you bake it, because once you've baked it, then yeah, it stays the same. We can see now we have this random rotation, which is pretty good. But now the particle system is done, it's not looking too great. So let's go ahead and play with the material and add some volumetrics. So let's go over here and split this window. Then we can change this from the 3D view to the shader editor. So click this window and shader editor. Then go ahead and select your cube. I'm just going to go over here to the material tab, open this up and we can change this now to the cube so we can preview how it looks. So yeah, we're just using this one emission node. So we could make this a little bit more interesting. I'm going to duplicate this. So select this node and shift D. Then we need to add a mix shader. So shift A, go to shader, add a mix shader, drop this in, then connect this up. Now uh, let's change this color to be something else. And let's move these out of the way. Now we can shift A, go to input. Let's add in a Fresnel. And then let's take the factor and plug this into the factor of the mix shader. And then we can play around with the index of refraction value. And we just want to check this preview as we do that. So that looks interesting. Again, you can do this any way you want. Okay, let's check this out in the 3D view. We can see as it moves around, it sort of switches between these two colors. Let's go back to the shader editor and change these colors now. So we can see it adds more visual interest and you can do this a number of different ways. So again, play around with the material to get something that you're happy with. And now we can move on to the volumetrics. So over here, let's change this from object to world. So if we go over here to the world properties, you can just see we have this background. If we go down to volume, we could add something here for the volume. So I'm going to click this. So we could use either of these. I'm going to use volume scatter. You see right away, everything's gone dark down here in the 3D view can't see anything and that's because either the camera is too far away so if we zoom right in we can sort of see things better but essentially the density is far too thick so on this volume scatter node we can just start to reduce the density until you get something that you're happy with going back to our cube I'm going to select this cube here go down to the materials scroll down to the strength and I just want to increase this until it starts to pop so now we can see it stands out a lot more. Now we can see the volumetrics is quite plain and boring. So let's go ahead and add some texture to this. So then back over here, I'm going to shift A, go to texture. And we could add any one of these textures in to add some random effect to it. This example, I'm going to use a Musgrave texture. So I'm going to grab this, drop it in here. And then I'm going to plug the height into the color. And we can see now it's changed. So let's change the scale. So something like that. So the volumetrics look better. I mean, it's not great, but it looks better. One problem is as we play through this, the volumetrics or the clouds just stay still. They don't move, which doesn't look too good. So what I'm going to do is go over here, go back to the Musgrave texture and actually make it move. Now, if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, your job's a lot easier. Just select the node, then press control T. It will then add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. If you don't have the node wrangler add-on enabled, just shift A, go to input, and then texture coordinate, shift A down to vector, then add a mapping node and just connect them up. So that's the generated into the vector, vector into the vector, and there we go. So yeah, we can move this volumetrics around. We can move it left and right. We can move it forwards and backwards. Or we can move it up 
and down. Again, it's entirely up to you which direction you go. So I think making it go down like that looks pretty good. I'm going to go back to the first frame. Let's change this back to zero. Then I'm going to hover the mouse over here and press I to add a keyframe. Then let's jump to the end frame. Let's move this. Maybe something like that. Then let's press I to add a keyframe again. We select this node, we can now see the points, these two diamonds. And it moves up and down, which is pretty good. Uh, one problem is the motion, it speeds up and then slows down. I want this to move at a constant speed. So in the timeline, I'm going to press V and change this to vector. And now we can see the motion is constant. So that's good. I'm happy with this and we can move on. Now, before we move on to the compositing, we can actually make this look a lot better by going to the render properties, select this icon. So we are using EV and this will only work in EV. So if you're using cycles, make sure you switch it over to EV. Then go down to bloom and click this button. So straight away, we can see it gives us a nice little glow. We can play around with these. And then finally, while we're here, let's go to the motion blur and activate this. So adding motion blur will definitely help. I'm going to increase this quite a bit. And then let's render this, see how it looks. So it definitely looks a lot better. Now the amount of motion blur you use and all these other settings will be scene dependent. Play around with them until you're happy. We also have a section for volumetrics. Again, if you want to play around with the start and end, the tile size, the samples, distribution, the volumetric lighting. If you don't want it to light up, turn it off. Again, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can go through and play around with. But when you are happy with it, we can move on to the compositing. So let's change this from the 3D view to the compositor. Then, as always, we need to check use nodes. Let's go ahead and add in a viewer node. So I'm going to hold Control, Shift and left click on this node. Make sure we enable backdrop and go to view and click fit. So for the compositing, we're not really going to do too much. We're going to add some color to the background. So Shift A, go to color, add in a mix node, drop this in here. And then connect this up to the viewer node, control shift, left click, then shift A, go to input. Let's add in an image. Go ahead and load up your image. So essentially it's three colors. It's blue, purple, and white, maybe with some dark colors as well. I'm going to plug this into the bottom and then we want to play around with the blend type until we get something that looks good. And depending on what you're trying to go for, some of these will look really good and sometimes they won't. So again, go through each one of these until you're happy with it. I'm going to try screen. Try overlay, goes very dark. And if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, if you have this node selected, hold alt and then press down arrow key. We can cycle between them. And if you want, we can add some more color. So I'm gonna go back to this, shift A, color, hue saturation value. I drop this in and then bump up the saturation. And then go ahead and add some color grading. So if you want color, color balance. Drop this in, again, play around with these values. And then finally, I'm probably gonna add a vignette. If you have the Darkfall VFX nodes add-on, go ahead and add it in. And then when you're happy with it and you wanna render this out, if you have the VFX nodes add-on, you can just go to the render settings and change all these. But if you don't, uh, we can go over here to the properties, make sure we set the resolution, make sure we set this to 100%, set the start and end frame, then go to the output, let's set the output where this is gonna save to. Then for the file format, we wanna select this and change this to FFmpeg video. And then for the encoding, we can select this icon and then choose H.264 in MP4 format. And there we go. Now we can go over to render, hit render animation, or control F12 and go ahead and render it out. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.